Hey, if the idea of having a shop air right here on your bench that you can turn on and off with a switch seems interesting, keep watching. I'll show you how I did it. This was an old compressor I had in a barn that probably been in there five years, and so I'm just blowing all the dirt out of it. I honestly didn't even remember I had it. So when I found it, I had this idea to use it for bench air. So the first thing I'm doing is just taking the cover off so I can get access to the switch wiring. Because basically what I'll be doing is making, taking that switch and making it remote. You can see the way it's wired. The hot, the hot wire goes through a fuse, then from the fuse to the one side of the switch, from the other side of the switch, back over to the motor or the controller. So I'm going to pull the pull the fuse and the switch out of the lid and. I don't show it in there, but what I'm using to extend the uh, switch from the compressor over to the side of the bench is just a section of uh, extension cord. That's a good thing to keep around if you have one that goes bad. It's really good wiring, and it's already insulated and everything. Here I'm just trying to pop the switch out without stabbing myself. Alright, here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to cut this about right here. And I'll use this one piece. And I'll tuck it up to where it hits this lip right here. And that'll be my cover plate. And then I can put the switch and the fuse in this plate right here. And I'll just hog this out a little bit so the switch and the fuse aren't touching anything. Actually, a single line cover plate would have been easier, but I didn't have one. So I dug through my electrical jump drawer and I found this one. So that's what I'm going to the trouble of cutting it apart instead of buying just a one switch plate. I already had this one. And that was kind of challenging trying to figure out the best way to carve that plate up. So I use a Dremel and a file and a rotary Dremel. I'm just using that to try and get some straight corners on there. And then I just use the Dremel and stuff to slowly sneak up on the sizes so those things would just slide in there. I'm just figuring out where I'm going to make the hole for the wiring to come through the bench. And 
that thing is, is the tool for the job. But the problem I had was that blade is completely dull. But those things are really good for this type of work. I figured I'd paint it black because I just thought that would look better. And I was right, I'm glad I did. Maybe I should have painted it orange like for safety or something, but let's do something besides white. Yeah, and so that's a piece of extension cord right there that I was talking about. And you'll see it's three wire, but I just cut the black wire. I mean, the I'm sorry, the green wire, which is ground, because I don't need it. The switch is just two wire. You know, it's just hot up to the switch and hot back down, so you only really need two wires. And so don't get too caught up looking at the color of the wires I'm using, because remember, even though that is a normal extension cord with a hot and a neutral on the ground, I'm just using two of those wires, they're both hot here because it's hot to the switch and hot back. I'm using these solder seal connectors, these things, I just love these things. They're really strong, they, do, they just work great. Just twist the wire. Put the connector on there, heat it up. It's a heat shrink, but it's also got a really strong, those little blue things like shrink really tight and grab the wire. Heat shrink tubing, and in the middle is a big chunk of solder that melts, so you get a soldered heat shrink connection all in one. And you can see I tied a knot in that extension cord so it won't get pulled through the lid. And I'm just Zip and zip tie up wires because everybody likes zip ties. So now the modifications to the, the uh, compressor are complete. I mean, this part of it, except for adding the switch. Coming up here is where I screw up bad. Because as I tighten this thing in, I over tighten it, and I don't know it yet, but I ended up cracking that connection. Right about there. Went one turn too many. Okay, that's where it's gonna sit. So now I need to run the switch wiring over here. I'm going to give myself plenty, so since this is going to be a direct, you know, this is going to be a hard wired, um, I'll put enough to where I can put some loops in it, so, I, so if I need to take the compressor out here or something to mess with it, I can without jacking it up, so, okay, you see we got the wire coming through where the switch plate's going to be, going back there all the way to the uh, compressor, extra wire I have, so I can get the compressor this far away from the bench, so that's plenty of room. So if I need to bring it out there and work on it, I can. Also, if that compressor dies, it gives me plenty of wiring just to wire in another one. So Basically what I was saying, I was just giving myself plenty of room. So if I need to pull the compressor out and work on it, I can because that thing, it's all hardwired together. Which was very prophetic since <laughs> I, had our, I didn't know I cracked that air fitting that I was going to have to take it out and work on it. One thing to remember when you're wiring this up, remember from the compressor, you're going to have the hot feed. The two connections of the compressor, the two wires, one of them is from the hot and one of them is to the motor. So you want to make sure the one that's the hot, whichever color you pick, is going to the fuse. And then from the fuse to the switch and then from the switch back down to the motor.
So I get it all wound up, put some tape on it, and now it's it's done. I mean, the modifications are finished as far as making a remote switch. All right, let's see what it looks like. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it turned out nice. I also made sure fuse was that word fuse was perfectly level because it just ain't on like that. All right, cool. So now what's left is tuck this wire up and get it wired in. Then we test it, and then we'll do the air side of the equation. So. And here I'm doing all this wiring that I'm getting ready to have to undo once I find out there's a leak. But this is the way I rewired it again. So that's just one of those U-shaped nails with a zip tie. Okay, and there's the switch go line goes back and then it goes this way. You can see I've got it plugged into that extension cord that I ran. That extension cord is going to feed this air compressor and it feeds this uh, strip. And it's on a dedicated 20 amp circuit. So you can see I've got everything kind of zip tied up and tucked under. So I guess the only thing to do is push the button and see if the compressor comes on or if it smokes to death or what. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's gonna be cool. So Let's get the air ran. Okay, if you pretend that this is the, the edge of the board, and like so we just drill the hole in through here. Have this, the washer, a piece of this pipe. This is quarter inch MPT pipe. Alright, that's gonna screw on. Then we have the board, washer on this side, and then this. And basically we'll put enough washers back here to where when this screws down it's pushing against it. But so it's gonna look like that. There'll be one washer on this side. We'll space it out with washers on the back side. Okay, I got a, I got the spacers on it. I got a wrench on it. So I'm gonna stick this back here. So it looks like on this side. And then you can see, you can see there's the line running. And I'll, and I'll tie it up there with the rest of this stuff. See if this works. The problem I was telling you, I was gonna make sure I was gonna leave myself enough cord to work on it. 
don't know if you can see there's a crack all the way there, so it's just leaking. Okay, I've looked at it, and the crack is not as bad as I thought. Let me see if I can, this will work, looking through this magnifying glass. So you can see it's not as bad as I thought. That's basically like JB Weld for boats or marine marine use. But it's, it's a really good, strong epoxy. And plus, I put it on the inside to try to force it from the inside out through the crack. So it's almost like pipe dope. Then I just sand the outside off so I can put some out here and I'm hoping that that would help it stick. Alright, so it's been about 20 hours since I did the epoxy repair. I put a little foam and stuff around there temporarily. I think I'll build a sound enclosure for it, but let's give it a shot and see if it holds air. Alright, well it seems to be holding. The compressor's still on. It kicked off. It's been off for about a minute now. So if you need to blow something off. And This thing really was a cool addition. I really like it. That's it. Hope I gives you an idea to give it a shot. See ya.